that's six that Clayton Kershaw has struck out in the first three innings. That ball's well hit to right. I mean, really well hit to right. And the Mets are on the board. Daniel Murphy waits on the 0-1, and there's a drive. Deep right field. Puig is back. That ball's gone. Giving him another look by pitching in the stretch. The 3-2 is driven to right. That ball is gone. Daniel Murphy has broken the tie here in the sixth. It is 3-2 Mets. A ball and a strike. That ball's well hit to right. Did he get all of this one? Yes, he did. That's in the air to right. That's pretty deep. That ball is gone. Daniel Murphy has struck again. He's filling every zone. And this ball is drilled to right center field. It is deep. Man alive, Daniel Murphy has homered for the fifth straight postseason game. Unbelievable. Must have threw that one in the strike zone. Even if you're a teammate of a guy this hot, you start to shake your head. The 1-1. In the air. Deep right center field. That ball is gone! Daniel Murphy has homered in six straight postseason games. Nobody's ever done it before. making a bad play how many bad plays then how they don't a pitcher doesn't hold a runner on and the Mets run wild on the base path then on top of this you have that the best way I can put this now is Murphy has become Joe Morgan that's basically it he's become Joe Morgan circa big red machine Joe Morgan won back-to-back -back MVPs Joe Morgan was an all-world, everything second baseman. Uh, Murphy is fielding the position. He is running the bases like Maury Wills in, in the postseason after being one of the most abominable base runners we've ever seen. He never doesn't get a great jump. He never doesn't make the right call. He never doesn't make the right read, the right instinct. This is, this is Murphy. And he hits the ball out of the ballpark repeatedly. 
So he hasn't become a decent second baseman. He's become Joe Morgan. Right in front of our eyes here in the postseason. So you chime in a little couple hits from right, which had to happen. A bunt from Duda, which actually became a big play in that game. And actually became, uh, built a run. And then add in that Cespedes finally hits a couple line drives, and you have yourself another ball game. Throw in Familia, who's unhittable, and the Mets have themselves three up and three down and have the Cubs staring at each other. And even relegated Wrigley Field to a quiet stadium last night. Wrigley Field was no big deal. Those fans were disillusioned. They're like, wait a second, where are our Cubs? Well, I don't know what's going on, but right now it is Mets, Mets, and Mets. And I, I understand that when you get 3-0, you, it's a different feeling in a series. Now, you could be 3-0 like the Yankees were over, say, the Braves or the Padres, and you think, you know what? You know, call me when it's over. It's over. I mean, these teams don't belong on the same field. But when you haven't been through it, 3-0, you want to do it as quickly as possible. Because when you haven't won... And you can almost see it in Terry Collins. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not looking at Oh, no. We already talked about it right after the game. Because they don't want to even it be perceived for a second, a millisecond, that they are doing anything except being ready for tonight's game. Because they have one more game to win. And these do take on... See, here's what happens now. The dynamic of the series completely changes now. The Mets have to win. The Cubs, if you're mad and this is what you see,